Hello everyone, thanks for joining guys. Thank you so much. This is Yusuf Chowdhury. I'm actually doing a workshop right here with the with the San Antonio Business Alliance. This right here, this is this Peter, there you go. And all these awesome business owners, all these awesome guests, right? So I'm doing a presentation on how to put yourself on Google local listing. So for that, I apologize because I won't be able to engage with you guys because I'm, you know, freaking giving presentations, so chill out, okay? So there you go. Here we go. All right, folks, so... So, guys, this is Yusuf Chowdhury, so I'm using to give the uh, Get Your Business Online presentation or the Let's Put San Antonio on the Map initiative that Google has. Uh, they partnered with uh, certain businesses uh, that are economic catalysts, uh, like the San Antonio Business Alliance, and how they help small businesses connect. And, and then, so now they want you to be able to put yourselves online. Uh, and that's what Yusuf Chowdhury is here for, to be able to educate you on how to do it. So, there you go. That's Yusuf Chowdhury. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate you all coming in today during this lunchtime. Let me start real quick. How many of you right now actually are listed in Google? Keep your hands up. All right, awesome. So how was the result? When you guys listed, did you guys get any clients, any customers? Did it help with any kind of leads? No? From online, right? Yeah, maybe 85% of the data is not online. Perfect. Well, when it comes to the online marketing, the online marketing aspect is so huge you have like 100 ways of doing stuff on the marketing so today I won't be able to talk about all this hundred stuff to do it but we're gonna focus on one simple task that most businesses don't actually apply and this is something we call it the Google local listing or the Google business page and it's free service so if you, you all have an, anybody of you have an actual office for your business how many of you have an office okay so what happened with the local listing you must have some type of like a business office so you can list it in Google, and that's how people are going to find you. Does that make sense? So right now, Google is actually pushing the, the local listing to a lot of small businesses because, you know, they want to promote a small business. Now, how many of you here have a website? All of you? One person? <laughs> all right, so all of you have a website. Cool. Now, how many of you get customers through the website? Awesome. How many traffic do you guys get? How many conversion on a monthly basis? One or three, four, five, ten customers? Maybe three. Maybe three? Okay. Well, let's go with this. Now, if you want to connect with me anytime, that's my cell phone number because I trust you all, right? That's why I put the number right there. So feel free to call me like 24 7. Okay? So it's 210 316 3123. And my company name is Online Business Owners. We are actually a digital marketing firm. What that means, we build websites. We build mobile apps, do SEO, online marketing, and we also train and coach startups, small businesses, and other companies. That's what we do. And beside that, I started a, right now it's actually under the nonprofit status. I started this organization called San Antonio Online Marketing Group, where we actually provide six to eight uh, workshops every month at no cost to any business owners locally. And we also do like one seminar per month. So if you're interested, it's right there, called meetup.com slash SA Online Marketing. We cover all kinds of topics when it comes to digital marketing, social media, and whatnot. So feel free to join because you know it doesn't cost you anything. It's covered by other businesses, okay? Now, so before we move forward, how many of you in this room enjoys looking at yellow pages? Not a single person, one person, there you go, okay. So you do enjoy reading the yellow pages, so only one person. So what does that tell you? You as a business owner, either none or one person out of all of you check yellow pages. What does that mean to you? You as a business owner, what does it tell you? What is it? It's not effective. It's not effective, what else, good? They're getting it somewhere else. They are getting it from somewhere else. So what's happening with, with all these yellow pages that get dropped at your door <laughs> every few months or so, what do, you, what do you do with them? You just burn them, you recycle, recycle them? Right? Sit in the corner. <laughs> sit in the I corner. Can you can use it for like, you know, multitasking. Uh, you can, you know, hit somebody with it or do whatever you want. I, right. I usually open the yellow pages and look for customers that don't have a website and go sell it to them. <laughs> like, yeah, you don't exist. Let me help you out. I'll help you out to hook you up with the Google Plus uh, business page. Okay. So that tells you none of, none of us use that. How many of you in this room use direct marketing? One, two. What about radio ad? One. TV? None, none? Not about local TV either? 
Billboards? And how is that working for you? I mean, as long as there's a highway and there's a TV, right? As long as we have highways and TV, of course, commercials and, and the billboards going to work, but unfortunately, they're very expensive. Correct? Yes. But even with billboard, do we really actually look at the billboard or are we busy texting? <laughs> Not in San Antonio. <laughs> right? If you if you drive anywhere, if you drive anywhere, if four cars passes by you, four cars, just every four cars passes by you, just kind of give it a quick glance. I guarantee you two out of those four on their phone. Which means they're not paying attention to the billboard anymore. Okay? So when you go back into online, how many of you actually go to Google to look for anything? See, all of us, right? All of us go to Google or Bing or Yahoo to look for any product or any services. Is that correct? Yes. Again, you as a business owner, if you do that, what does that mean to you? Other people do. Others are doing it. Others are doing it, which also means your customers are doing the same thing, right? So if your customers want to do, do the same thing, to find you, to look up for your services, and they don't, then you're gonna have a problem, right? Okay, so as you can see, almost 93% of online experience begins with a search. That basically means anybody pops, opens, uh, opens up the browser, they go to Google, the first thing they do, they just search for something. Which means your customer search for something. Does, is that right? Yes. All right, let me show you a quick example. If I have something here. Okay, I'm give you, let me give you a quick example how your customer look up for your product and services. Can I? Yes. The cards are for you to put the number of your menu selection. Okay. All right, so let me go do a quick test just to explain to you how your customers, your target market, look for your product and services. Okay, so you're all ready, right? Okay, here we go. I have something in my hand. I don't want you to say it right now. I want you to just look at it, okay? I want you to look at this thing in my hand. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way back there to show you there's something cool. I don't know what it's called, but don't say it right now. Okay, you're all seeing this, right? You're all seeing this, right? Okay, now what I'm going to do, I will count to three, and I want all of you to tell me what the heck is this? So y'all ready? Here we go. One. Two, three. USB flash What the? So many answers, right? Somebody says USB drive, somebody says memory stick, somebody says, flash drive. Right, finger, toe, something, right, flash drive. <laughs> so for this one product, for this one, one, one thing, your customer are typing something different. Does that make sense? So if you're a consultant, if you're a real estate agent, if you are a yoga instructor, do you really think they're gonna just type yoga instructor? They don't. They're gonna type different, several things to find you. So for that, we have to do something we call it keyword research. And there's a tool for that called that uh, Google Keyword Planner, it's free, check it out. If you have a Gmail account, you can just go to Google Keyword Planner, go ahead and put your main do uh, keyword and Google will give you a variation of different key phrases that your customer are looking for. And based on that, now you understand, ah, oh, okay, so this is what they're looking for. This is what they're typing. I need to figure out how can I put all this information on my website, all right? 97 of the consumers search for product and services online, and 75% don't even go to the second page. So 75% of the consumers don't even hit the second page to look for anything. If they're looking for a dentist, for real estate, for, I don't know, crazy ninja dentist, on the first page, they find you, they're gonna click you and that's it. So that's the majority, almost 75%, okay? And the 40% of the customer that comes to your website, it, they come through the search, because they already searched in the beginning, they find you and that's how they come to you. So that's why this is very, very important. And that's why you as a local business owner, you need to have that online presence. But in order for us to do like a SEO and all this online marketing stuff, it's lengthy, it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and it's very sad that even the basic part most of us don't do, and that is the local listing. Okay? Any questions so far? Is it cold here? 
<laughs> All right. Now, and where do we search from? Tablets. Tablets and laptops, right? So, if they're searching from the tablets, iPhone, iPad, what does that mean to you again? Our customers are doing it. They're not using their phone book. They're not using their phone book, but there's a very important element. If they are going to find your website on the mobile device, that means your website has to be mobile friendly. friendly. Because if it's not, that is called bad user experience. You know how when they open your website on the mobile device and they do like this with their fingers? And that, that's going to cause a concussion, right? <laughs> so that's called bad user experience. You have to make sure that your website scrolls up and down easily, whether it's on iPad or on the iPhone, okay? And not just that, for you to be a local business, you need to make sure you have two things that has to be there, actually three. One is your phone number. It has to be very, very easy to access. And not just that, you have to make sure that the phone number is clickable. So when somebody finds your information in Google listing or your website, you gotta make sure that that phone number, you don't want them to go and write down or, or type the phone number, you want them just to click and automatically dials. Okay, and secondly, you need to make sure that your map is up to date. Okay, not like taking it somewhere else, <laughs> you know, making a customer get lost. You need to make sure that your map is up to date and your contact information, your phone number, your, your email address, your any, for, any sort of information that they can connect with you, you have to make sure that those are up to date, okay? So let's look at some of the statistics right here. It says 57% would not recommend a business with a bad mobile website. That means if they find your website in Google through the mobile device and they have to do the finger shrinking and enlarging, they're not gonna go back. They're not gonna recommend to you to anybody. Does anybody know what kind of tool you can use to check and see if your website is mobile friendly. Does anybody know? Your cell phone. Right? That's the most easiest way on your phone, right? But check this out. When you go to Google, write this one down. Do a search for Google mobile friendly. Okay? Do a search for Google mobile friendly. It's a free tool from Google. So what's gonna happen, you can put your website and Google will tell you whether this is mobile friendly or not. If it's not, they will give you some suggestion and instruction, but most of those instructions are not for you, those are for your developer. So whoever built your website, you need to send them those information because most of that coding, so they can go out and fix it or maybe rebuild your site on a mobile friendly site, okay? So make sure you check out mobile friendly, uh, Google mobile friendly. Okay, all right. So <clears throat> those are the statistics, basically what it means you have to be mobile because you're local, and that's what we do. We just pull our phone, looking for a dentist, looking for a chiropractor, looking for attorney, looking for yoga instructor. It's all done on the mobile device, okay? And you need to be present because most of us do check on the mobile device. Any questions, folks? I know the calls is making you all fall asleep, okay? So feel free to ask questions, okay? I don't want you to all be like, just like listening to me because I'm kind of very boring. What about on the, will that also tell you about your, uh, your phone number if it's clickable? That is an excellent question. What happens depends on how you build the site. So whoever built the website for you, they can make it clickable, right? But on Google business page, it's automatically clickable. Oh, okay. So when you set up your Google listing, it is automatically clickable, okay? So typically, <clears throat> this is just an example of how when somebody does a search for Sanatine Real Estate, they will see this area, right? What's, what's the top area? The ad section, right? Did you guys did you guys notice recently what did Google do with with this area and this area? They made it colorful. <laughs> well, they actually removed the yellow background. They removed the yellow background because previously, you know, like one or two years ago, there used to be like a yellow background. So when you see it, you would know that's an ad. Correct? They removed it. Why? I'm sorry. There you go, because people will not pay attention to the, in fact, here's the, here's the fun fact. Even though 20, uh, I think 14 to 20% actually click on the ad, and the majority actually click right here, like 90%, even then, Google makes like billions of dollars on the ads. Wow. Even then, they make a lot of money, right? So what they did right now, they removed the yellow area, so consumers that don't understand that these are ads, they're gonna click on it, but they're actually ads. And, and what they did, they just put a small sign that says add, 
people are going to miss that. Nobody knows. Because they know that the majority of the customers click where? On the organic side, right? This area, because it's totally organic. There's no ad, there's no, people are going to think, okay, this is not an ad, it's just an organic, and I'll, I'll click on that, okay? So that's what's happening right now. But that's a different topic on, in fact, I'm doing a workshop on Google AdWords this month. So if anybody wants to come and learn how to set up Google AdWords, we'll teach you. Just join the San Antonio Online Marketing Group, okay? All right, so for us, what, what we need to do to create the local listing, there are a few rules you have to consider. First, your business name, your business name has to be the exact name if you are going to post it anywhere else. What I mean by that, if you are going to post it in Yelp, if you are going to post it in Foursquare, if you are going to post it in Super Pages, if you are going to post it in yellowpage.com, you need to make sure that the name of your business it is exactly the same. What I mean by that, if the first letter is capital of the first word and the first letter is capital of the second word of your business, it has to be the same. If you make it lowercase on Yelp, it's gonna cause a conflict. Okay, so make sure your business name, it is exactly the same. Your address information, it is exactly the same. I'm gonna tell you why, because I'm gonna go after the Google, I'm gonna tell you why you need to have the exact same address. So don't put in one of them 120 suite and another, another one 120 STE. It has to be exactly the same. Did you guys get that? Yeah. That's number two. <clears throat> Excuse me. And by the way, if you want to set up the listing, go to this link right here. It's gybo.com slash business. So all of you tonight or today, uh, for those that don't have the uh, Google uh, business page, go to gybo.com forward slash business. And what you do, you will type the name of your business in the city. And it will tell you whether you exist or you don't. If you exist, it might not be complete, incomplete. They will tell you how to complete it. If it doesn't exist, you gotta start fresh and start putting those information. Does that make sense? Okay, going back <clears throat> to the information, make sure the business name is exactly the same. Make sure your address is what? Exactly? The same. The same. And also the business description. Now, with the business description, if I'm a dentist, right? When I start talking about my business, the first thing I should say is San Antonio Dentist by blah, 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 blah. Why? Because San Antonio Dentist is a keyword, it's a searchable keyword that the customer type to look for. So you need to make sure that your keyword that your customer type to look for, for you, make sure you add that on the description. Does that make sense? But you have to describe it like, like you're actually writing it like a, for somebody to read it normally. So something like, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, uh, San Antonio Dentist by the crazy ninja dentist. Okay? Blah, blah, blah. If you're an attorney, San Antonio attorney by the law firm. Does that make sense? So make sure you put the keyword in the description because those keywords are searchable. Does that make sense, folks? Yes. Are you sure? I can repeat it a million times until you get it. <laughs> Say it one more time. One more time, yes. So make sure you put the keyword on the business description because those are the information that your customer look for. If you have a brand name, nobody knows your brand, but if somebody look for best dentist, Leon Valley dentist, best dentistry, whatever, if you do the keyword research, make sure you add that on your description, okay? Number four, contact information. I've seen some Google Plus pages that don't have anything except an email. I'm like, what happened to the number, <laughs> right? So your phone number, your email address, your social media channel, if you wanted to connect with you on Twitter and Facebook, put those information. Fax, I don't know if anybody uses fax. I know real estate guys still use fax because of the contract. But most of us, I don't know, I haven't seen fax for like years. Okay? <laughs> Everything is digital right now. Uh, types of payment. <clears throat> you need to mention what kind of payments do you take? Check, cash, excuse me, Discover card, American Express, Visa, MasterCard, you gotta mention that. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> Six, hours of operation. So you gotta mention from what day to what day do you work and from what time to what time and what days you're closed. And you need to have at least 10 images of your business, of your office, of yourself, right? Take some selfies, okay? Have like 10 images of yourself and pick the proper category. Now, it's very important that all this listing has to be 100% complete. Can somebody tell me why I have to make sure 
that my local listing has to be 100% complete. Can somebody tell me why? Because otherwise you don't exist. That's one. Otherwise you won't exist. And secondly? It won't list it. I'm sorry? It won't list it. It won't list it? Actually it will, but it won't be, it won't be complete. But think of, it, think of it from a customer point of view. This is a first impression. If you're not ah, first impression, first impression. there you go. So let's say I find your listing and it's 50% complete. Are you a serious business owner? Who do you spend time to finish all the information? Just like a website that has nothing except a white page. Right? Does that make sense? If you're a customer, if you're a customer and you find Duffy's Google listing and it's only like 50%, percent you be like, this guy's not serious. So many things missing, right? But if everything is complete, just like the idea of the website, right? If you, if you visit a website for a, for a customer, I'm sorry, for a business, and everything is complete, you would have some sort of credibility and trust. Does that make sense? So incomplete listing is the same thing like incomplete website or incomplete social media platform. Does that make sense? That's why you have to make sure that everything is 100% complete. Okay? All right. So, so this is just for Google. This is just for Google Plus. And of course, Google dominates kind of the internet and it's free. What happens, once you submit this information, you can, there is a specific number if you guys need it, let me know. Uh, they don't publicly announce it, but it's like a, some sort of know, secret number. If you want to verify your account by calling them, let me know, tweet it to me, Facebook to me, trust me, whatever, I'll send it to you. Or what happens if you do it traditionally, they will send you a postcard within 10 business days. Once, you, once they send you the postcard, you're supposed to put the PIN number and verify it. And it has to be 100% complete. Okay? So, any question? We haven't done yet. <laughs> any more questions? Yes. We good? We good? So you all going to do this tonight? Okay, hey, Carl, you have the names because I'm going to you know, follow, follow up with it. <laughs> right? So, and the beauty about this, first of all, Google is giving you this service for free, right? And you are going to end up showing up locally because have you noticed sometimes you type a business name and sometimes these roofing companies or attorneys show up like list by list with their map? You know why? Because they have a Google Plus page. That's where they show up. Does that make sense? It doesn't cost you anything if you do it by yourself, of course. So make sure you follow these rules. Now, I want to talk about something a little bit different away from Google local listing and it's called Moz. If you go to Moz, M O Z, dot com slash local okay go to moz dot com slash local once you go there what you need to do type the name of your business and enter your zip code okay once you do that moz will basically tell you on which of this listing you are being listed or not so it's not just you're using google but you can also use yelp uh, City Search, Hot Frog, uh, Nokia, Local, E Local. Why? Because Google actually listens, this is true, Google actually pay attention to reviews in other local listing sites. And all these websites, your customer actually hang out in those places. So why not have your information there? Does that make sense? And the cool thing about this, moz.com forward slash local, what it does, it will give you a score and it will tell you which of the listing is incomplete and it will tell you how to finish it. It will tell you what's missing in order for you to make it 100% complete. Again, it doesn't cost you anything. If you, if, you, if you want to pay them, you can pay them like, I don't know, 60 bucks a year, they'll do it for you. If you don't want to, you can do it by yourself. So now you have Google Plus business page, right? Now you have crappy Yelp, sorry Yelp, and uh, I don't know about Yahoo that actually, but you have, uh, a Bing, you have super pages, you have best of the web. These are the places where customers, like the one that's looking for you, hang out right there. They want to find a different, different you know, businesses. Does that make sense? So do that. That's the first thing you do. But make sure you need to have a, a business office. But Yusuf, what about if I'm working from home? That's a good question, Yusuf, right? If you work from home and you don't have an office, I highly recommend that you do not use your home address. Okay, you don't want some freaking crazy psychopath who's pissed off at you, <laughs> okay? It doesn't happen, but just in case, I mean, I mean, it's your house, you don't want to put that publicly. What I recommend for those that don't have an office, you can look up for virtual offices. We have like Venture Fund, we have Geekdom, we have different places, pay them like, you know, 50 bucks a month, or you can go to UPS store, 
and sign up with a business bell box. And instead of saying PO box, he will say suite number. Yeah. Because these listings, they're not gonna check PO box because they're local listing, which means you're telling Google I have an actual local space. Does that make sense? So if you're working from home, you don't have an actual office, get the UPS store, you know, mailbox. I'm not sure what's, I think it's much affordable. Or you can just sign up with the virtual office and use that. Okay? And that's the moz.com. Yes, moz.com slash local. Put it on there. And it's yeah, put your, put your business name, put the zip code, and it will tell you everything. It will tell you what is missing, what is incomplete, what is not complete. It will tell you exactly this one, you're missing a couple of images. This one, the category is incorrect. This one, the address is incorrect. So you can log in and test it by yourself. And once you do that, give it at least like 10 to 15 business days, then go back to Mars Local and run it again. Okay? So this way, you're not only utilizing Google, but you're also utilizing other listings. <coughs> so you can get more exposure. Does that make sense? Hopefully, more customers. Does that make sense, folks? All right, any more questions? So yes. What's the way to move up in the Google listings? That is an excellent question. When it comes to Google listing, uh, the way to do that, you have to put content in the business page because it's like a, there's a section for posting content, just like Facebook. So the more active you are, that's one. And secondly, reviews. So you gotta tell your happy customer, hey, go to my Google account and give me some reviews. Okay? Having a review in Google is more powerful than having a testimonial in your website. Can somebody tell me why? People have to go to your website. People have to go to your website, and sometimes people might lie on their website. How do you know that this person is who he is or who she is, right? But, but when somebody gives you a review in Facebook, did, did you know that in your Facebook business page, people can leave reviews, right? If somebody leaves reviews in, in, in Google, that's an actual face of a person. So Google listens to that. So this is like an, like an actual person giving the comment there's much value than just putting it yourself. Does that make sense? So that's what I highly recommend. If you are a local business owner, you have a happy customer, tell them, hey, when you go online, what do you prefer? Google, Yelp, Facebook? If they say Facebook, okay, can you go to my Facebook page, give me some reviews. Can you go to Yelp, give me some reviews. Can you go to Google, give me some reviews. And in your Google, make sure you constantly put some content, like blog posts, videos, educational, that's how you get, you know, ranking up. On Google Plus? Because the, good question, the Google business page is actually Google Plus business page. But you know Google, they're kind of on crack sometimes. Sorry Google. They just, you know, change <laughs> weird names. But it's, right now they call it Google, um, uh, Google My Business Page, but it's actually like Plus. So when you go there, you will see there's a section called About, which is about your company, with the map and information and everything, and there's another tab called Post. So take your opportunity, start posting content, your blog posts, your videos, your tips, motivation stuff, and keep it busy. I recommend that you should post like once a day. Okay? And that's it. Because you want to make sure that your audience engage with you. Yes? So then, for those, for those who assume they don't have the time to post daily on right. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, you, whatever, all the other ones, right. Google Plus, um, would you suggest that they post something daily on one and then just duplicate what they posted on the other platforms? Did you guys hear what Pete said? Right? Okay, can, can I post one content, all five of them? The question is, depends. What I mean by that, if all my target market in all the social platforms, then it's not, it's not gonna look good because it's gonna be redundant. But if you have few, if you're a beginner, if you're a beginner, I would say yes. If you're a beginner, yes. Post the same blog on all of them. Because you never know who's gonna find you in Google, who's gonna find you in Facebook, who's gonna find you in Twitter. Does that make sense? To each their own. So initially, to keep things very simple, you can do that. You can also use a scheduling platform like you know Buffer Apps. Anybody knows Buffer Apps? A Hootsuite, right? You can use Hootsuite or Buffer App and put all your content ahead of the time, and it will automatically go out to you know the Google uh, uh, Plus page or Facebook and whatnot. Yes. Smell, oh, so good. Hoot sweet. Hoot sweet, like H O O T and sweet, like a sweet number. S U I T. Yeah. So they have a free version and a paid version, and also Buffer Apps is another one that you can try and see which one do you like. Buffer Apps? Yes, just do Google Buffer Apps. Okay, and you can schedule a content ahead of the time. Now, one thing about the automation, you have to make sure whatever content you put, if your customer click like or engage, you gotta respond. 
don't do an, don't do an auto response. Okay, be you. Okay, and like in Twitter, somebody follow me and suddenly, hey, thank you for the following. Slash cried fire. Oh, that was automatic. That wasn't even real. You know, you hurt my feelings. Does that make sense? So there you go, folks. Any more questions? That's my clone. <laughs> I mean, seriously, guys, this is free. Do it. It's good for your business. You need to be, you know, visible in the local listing. That's the first thing you do before you go to the SEO and Google advertising and Facebook advertising. The first thing every local business needs to do is to be on the local listing before anything else. Okay? Any more questions? Yeah. Good stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. So, so that's you to Chowdhury. Um, if you follow him anywhere uh, online, I mean, that's usually where he's at. It's online. Um, this, he, like this all the time, everything. Uh, it's Periscope, and um, again, if, for those of you who don't know, a live stream broadcasting system. Yeah. Right? And it's done from the phone, and it's interactive to the extent that you have people. Uh, Somebody's giving hearts. <laughs> okay. And it's hard to see right now, but the screen of what's behind me from his phone. And then there's hearts on the side, and then there's people commenting down here like uh, Mita Texas, uh, constantly he says constantly providing value. Yeah. Um, so you can find him on Periscope. Yeah. You can find him on Google. You find him at the information that you see on here to yeah. be able to educate you further on how to get your business online if this was kind of too fast. Uh, he provided a link here, and also on our Salvo business page, we'll have connectivity, yeah. you know, for for Yusuf. Uh, to provide additional information, um, but as we wait for your food to come out, I don't. I guess you're still be here. Yeah, I'll be here. Just in case you guys have questions about certain things, um, feel free to overwhelm him uh, with your questions. But he's he's uh, always available. Thank you. So, if you guys need, do you guys need a step by step guide on how to set up the Google listing? You guys need that? Raise your hand. Okay. Can Google it? You can Google it, but I have a, I have, I have a document. I have a document from Google. From Google, if you want it, just Facebook me, tweet me, Google slap me, right? Google and I'll send it to you. Okay, I'll send it to you. So you can. It's a step by step with images and everything, step by step. In case you're like, you know, kind of nervous and confused and scared, so that document will help you out. Okay. And like exactly Pete said, I mean, I'm available online, 24/7. You're right. right. But you can still, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just about that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so Periscopes are live, right? And he's live. Yes. When it ends, it's on there for about the next 24 hours. If you happen to miss him there, he has a catch feature that catches the same the, the same scope that he just did, and, and you're able to still find him. And I think it's like catch.me yeah. forward slant. You said? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Did, did anybody use Periscope for some wood? Did it, raise your hand. Only one person used, two person, right? Okay. So Periscope is, what is it? It's a social media live streaming mobile app. So instead of tweeting, I'm just talking to the rest of the world. It's like a face to the rest of the world. Okay, it's become very popular. Uh, Twitter bought them uh, in March, right? In March, we're like $100 million. So if Twitter spent $100 million, what does, what does that tell you? Again, I'm always looking at the big shots, what they're doing, right? Facebook came with their own version of live streaming. YouTube enhanced their live streaming as well. And the other 10 live streaming app, like My Eye, uh, what is it, Hang With, uh, blab, so many coming up. I think this is a new thing right now with the social media. Mm -hmm. It's a live streaming. You know why it's so popular right now? Because it's authentic, it's real. I don't have to edit a video. It's me waking up and talking and be, being very original, be, being very authentic. So that's what I do every night. I just, uh, maybe at the 9, th 9 p.m. at night or 10 p.m. at night, I just go to Periscope and do a quick tip on how to, you know, all, all, everything about digital marketing. So if you follow me, you will learn. So yes. So is there like a recommended amount of time that you that you would say it really hits home if you do two minutes or if you do longer time period or what? That is a very beautiful question. With Periscope, it depends on your audience. I started with 10 minutes and unfortunately ended up being 30 minutes now. <laughs> Every time I want to do 10 minutes, I can't because that's not a question. I'm like, okay, I'll answer it to you, right? Some people do it for like two hours. Some people for like a whole day. So it depends on how you're going to do it. Okay, you need to log in with your Twitter account and people are going to find you. But the only thing I'm going to advise you to do is this. If you, if you periscope from home, turn off the location. Because we can find you where you live. We've seen teenagers periscoping, acting like a goofball, and we can see their address. Absolutely. It's, it, it's, a, it's crazy. Yeah, but it's an awesome tool because we get connected with a lot of, uh, I got clients through periscope, we get connected with a lot of other agencies. So 
I'm not gonna ask you to jump into it, but just look into it because you need to evaluate your business, you need to focus on your website, you need to focus on what makes you money, right? We are doing it because we're a digital market as well to test it anyway. Yes, sir. Yeah, I find that uh, also whenever you start broadcasting, um, paying attention to what your subject is. Yes, the title. The title of your periscope is very important. Sometimes if it's catchy, they'll start okay. jumping in right away. But it seems like a not so catchy topic, you won't get a lot of money. Absolutely. That's, I'm glad you mentioned that. There's a, another tool called, uh, if you want to have an excellent topic for your blog, for your podcast, for YouTube, for Periscope, it's, go to this website. It's called uh, Tweak, no, like tweaking, Tweak Your Biz, B-I-Z. So go ahead and write it down, Tweak Your Biz. So this, this uh, tool will help you to come up with an awesome title for your content, for anything. So Tweak Your Biz. All right, any more questions? Are we all good? So I was just going to find that your planks will be coming out shortly. Right. You, good? you guys are scholars. <laughs> now go teach. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's not, yeah, I know it's not more for that. So. All right, folks. Whoa, wow. You all have stayed here. You've seen him. We've seen them. I, I continue to follow. We do. I do a lot of research when it comes to our online uh, presence. Um, so, so we continue to follow, and I continue to educate myself on what on what's happening in the world uh, of, of social what's up? media. Exactly. What's up, Ian? How you doing? Each and every one of you, as a business owner, needs to be okay. online. Thanks, uh, Henry. We Henry's here in San Antonio, by the way. Uh, hey, Henry, you need to hang up, man. What are you doing there? But. Um, it's always important for you to find you massive me? engines that exist like Google, like Yahoo, like Bing. Yes. Because you never know where the people are this is at. The, so your business needs to be the awesome guy who invited me. Pete. Of, of letting everybody, hello, yeah. letting everybody um, <laughs> learn and know uh, where you're at. So your okay. is coming out right now. Um, All right. <clears throat> uh, All right, folks. Did y'all enjoy the good? session today? Also, next. Do y'all have any questions? Next, not, not, uh, no questions. Tuesday, oh wow, Tuesday you guys are great. Um, we're gonna be, thank you. The topic's gonna be marketing, PR, thank you, thank you so much. Sales. Then we're gonna be, then we're gonna be moving into the second two. Yes, okay, cool. Of we'll October. do. We're gonna, move into, we're gonna be talking about relationship marketing. And we'll then the, the fourth Tuesday of that we'll month, video marketing, and then November. We'll be talking about. Um, yes, I will send you the document if you need it. I'll just, just tweet it to me. I'll, I'll give it to you. Pocketing your pocketing okay. your business to a better bottom line. Uh, yes, I do. So we have we already have it set as to the next topics and what all those do. And each one of them kind of spin off of getting your business online. Now following a plan of action, so that you as okay. a business can start just uh, for go ahead and tweet it to me. I'll send you the document. Focus on the current year, but also making sure that you have all the pieces and all the steps. In yes, place. and also give a shout out to. This is uh, um, and if everybody was here, I hope I have enough, but I have shirts over here. I'll lay them out. To make this sure is the organization, the uh, San Antonio Business large, Alliance. Large, medium. Yeah. So they're the one who invited me to give a talk with this awesome local business right here. So I want to walk a little bit. Oh yes. So what? Time to eat food. Our chapter. Okay. Just gonna sit in the corner. <laughs> All right. Gotta give some privacy. All right. All right, folks. In the corner. I want to sit in the corner right here. Yes. All right. Thank you, Ismail. Uh, actually, I didn't. Can you repeat the question again? Feed us food, please. <laughs> okay. All right. So there you go, folks. That was a quick presentation. I usually can't do 30-minute presentations very hard. I usually do like you know two hours or more. But so my good friend of mine, Pete from the San Antonio Alliance, they are always helping local businesses. So they had me come here and talk about this topic. So. How have you guys learned? Yes, if you need the the step by step on how to do the Google listing for the Google business page, I can send you the document. Okay, it's actually from Google, but I can I can send it to you. Just go ahead and tweet it. <clears throat> yes, I will. Uh, if you can, if you kindly, Anita, just tweet it to me. Just kind of tweet it so I can see it. Then I'll give it to you. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So anything else? Any more questions?
You are most welcome. You are most welcome. You are most welcome. Oh wow! I I'm sorry. I, I blocked you by mistake. <laughs> Apologies for that. Ah, I block. What's the name by mistake? I'm, 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 I'll block later. Okay. I was sending you know, view the profile and I block. What's the name? Uh, oh, that sucks. I gotta unblock you. Sorry about that. <laughs> that was an accident. Please forgive me. Okay. All right, folks. Yeah, Taryn. Tell her I'm sorry. I didn't even mean to block her. I was like trying to uh, give her a reply, but suddenly, oh shoot! Better not block me. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, I'll unblock her. But um, okay. Tell her I'm sorry. Tell her it was a mistake. My fingers are too fat. That's why. All right. So, do you all have any question about you know Google local listing or Mars.com slash local? If you don't, I'll just. Uh, and the scope. I appreciate it, you all, you know, for waiting here, watching me do my presentation. Uh, it's funny because I put the presentation like, you know, five minutes before the event. Isn't that crazy? I just slap it together. All right, cool. All right, thank you so much, and uh, hopefully I might do another scope tonight on uh, WordPress. <laughs> Throw us in the food. I don't know what kind of food they're gonna bring, but anyway. All right, cool. I gotta go back and eat. Yes, indeed. All right, well, I'll see you all later. Thank you so much for hanging out. You'll have an awesome day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.